الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله I wanted to read two ahadith which illustrate for us the importance of striving to keep the most important relationship that you can have open. And this is the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reason being because all of your problems, all of your solutions, they can be rectified by your Lord. And your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can help you and alleviate your pain, your suffering, and even your destruction. Abu Abdurrahman Thoban Mola Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Sami'tu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a yaqul Alayka bi kathrat as-sujood lillah Fa innaka lan tasjida lillahi sajdatan illa rafaka allahu biha daraja Wa hatta anka biha khatiya Ruahu Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abu Abdurrahman Thoban Mawla, Mawla uh, Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, It's upon you to make an abundance of sujood or lots of sujood. Kathrata sujood lillah. For verily, no one makes sujood, prostration, to Allah except that Allah raises with him levels, daraja. And removes or expiates some of the sins, removes sins. And this is collected in Sahih Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Alaykum bi kathrat sujood lillah." And this means that the believer is making lots of sujood to Allah subhanahu wa taala, lots of worship. And this sujood of Habit Tafillah is not the sujood of, as the ulama mentioned, it is not the sujood of uh, Tilawat al Quran, sujood al Tilawa, or Sajjah al Saho, or uh, those uh, various types of sujood. But rather, this means the sujood of the prayer, meaning that during your rakah, so making lots of salat, striving often to pray, not just the wajib, the obligatory prayer, but also the prayers, uh, the extra nawafil. And that the believer, when they do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises them in the hereafter. So here you gain the benefit of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life as well as the hereafter and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is raising your station in the hereafter and likewise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving you and who from amongst us does not need forgiveness especially when we know the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said Kullu ibn Adam khatta wa khayran khatayina tawabun. All the children of Adam make sins. But the best of sinners is those who repent. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi wa yaghfiru ma dunadhalika li man yasha. 
And verily, Allah does not forgive that you commit polytheism with him, you know, shirk, that you worship other than him. But he forgives whosoever he pleases uh, for other than that. Meaning that if you die, if you commit shirk in this life, then you need to make toba. You need to make toba and strive to strengthen your iman and be away from those things which cause you to misguidance. So this is a way for the believer to get forgiveness for his sins and to supplicate. Supplicate for yourself, supplicate for your family, supplicate for the believers, your brothers and sisters who are being slaughtered in, around the world in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Burma, in Central African Republic, in all in various African countries. Subhanallah. Make du'a for yourself and your brothers and sisters. Another hadith I wanted to mention on Abi Sufyan or Abi Safwan, Abdullah ibn Yusri al Aslami, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayr al nas man tala umrahu wa hasna amaluhu. Ruahu tirmidi wa qala hadith hasan. In this hadith, the hadith of Abi Safwan, Abdullah bin Yusr, al-Aslami, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best people is those who live long and they do righteous deeds. So those are two attributes that need to be together. Mulazama is that the person lives long and they live long on righteousness. Not just living long, living long in sin, living long and not praying, living long in oppressing people, living long in hurting others. But instead, this is the person who lives long and they do righteous deeds. And in this regard, in the, another hadith, which shows us the importance, if we're blessed to live long and however we live this life, however long we live in this life, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْمَرْعِ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلَهُ إِلَّ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ أَوَّلَ الْعِلْمْ يُنْتَفَعَ بِي أو صدق جارية الْعِلْمْ يُنْتَفَعَ بِي وَوَلَدٍ صَالِحَ يَدْعُو لَهُ رواه المسلم The Prophet ﷺ said that if that the deeds of a person cease when they die except three. The first being the one who does a continuous charity, Sadaqah Jariyah, meaning they build a masjid, they use their wealth, they support a, a, a Dawah center, they support uh, or they teach Islamic knowledge and they or, or uh, they they do something which is a continuous charity. They do a a, a, a waqf, you know, they have a building and they, you know, all, the, all these various ways, which after they die, it's still doing charity and it's still in the process of doing good and serving the community, serving humankind, doing something righteous, uh, a charity that has, you know, feeds people that after you, there's wealth generated and it still continues to help and support people. This is a continuous sadaqah. A well. Digging a well in a poor country and the people benefit water. You died. You died maybe 50 years ago and the well people are still drinking and still benefiting and still supplying a whole community. This is the continuous charity. The second being al-almiyun tafabi. Knowledge that the people benefit from. So people benefit from your knowledge. You wrote books, especially. Now we have, of course, with the videos and the and the recordings. You know how many of our ulama we still listen to. You know, in their books, these books. Some of these books are a thousand years old, as far as when they were originally written, and more. And we benefit from them. They're long in the grave. They've long turned to dust. They've long been in Al Barzakh in another life, in another world, which we'll all join. But they're still getting adjur and reward. This book, this is Imam Nawawi. Imam Nawawi, Rahimullah Ta'ala. And we still benefit 
from his book, although it doesn't say exactly when he he passed, Rahimullah Ta'ala. And likewise. And the third category is that was mentioned in the hadith is the walid and sariah uh, yad'uluhu. Or walid, walid and salih yad'uluhu. It is the righteous child that supplicates for you. So teach your children ilm. Do your best to have your, your children raised in a righteous environment. Treat them good, but teach them. Teach them good manners, akhlaq wa adab, manners. And, and teach them, let them learn the Quran, let them learn the sunnah. Let them be uh, people of good. So that when you die, they will remember and they will supplicate for you in hopes that Allah will accept their supplication. So this is very important for the believer. And this is advice to myself and my brothers and sisters that we have to strive to worship Allah often and much. Kathar to sujood means our prayer. And supplicate often. And do those deeds. Look for ways to do charity. The continuous charity. Look for ways to seek knowledge and teach knowledge if you have the ability. Or at least support support it. And look for ways, if you have children, raise them in righteousness. And we ask Allah the Almighty to correct us and correct the affairs of our children. And correct the affairs of the Ummah. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins. And bless us all with ilm and nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal al muttaqabilin, so we can fall under that hadith. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.